In 2006, an emerging rap superstar was a free agent, Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne was a free agent. He'd been signed to a lurker label, Cash Money, that's ran and owned by his father, his big brother, his mentor, Birdman. However, in 2006, he found himself as a free agent and he was fielding offers from other record labels trying to see if the grass may be greener with another opportunity. One of those record labels that were super interested in Lil Wayne who offered him a deal was Rock Nation and Jay-Z. Now, even though the Rock Nation deal never really, you know, came into fruition because Lil Wayne went back to cash money after figuring out a deal with his mentor Birdman, it still left a bad taste in Birdman's mouth and Birdman's and Jay-Z relationship was soured. Despite Birdman and Jay-Z relationship being soured, Lil Wayne and Jay-Z still maintain a working relationship because after 2006, they worked on a couple of hits, including absolute smashes like Mr. Carter, Swagger Like Us, Hello Brooklyn 2.0. So they had a working relationship and they made hits together. Now come in 2009. So, you know, this was before everybody's time. This was before the cloud chasing began. Because right now in 2022, we will see a lot of these lists like Complex, Rolling Stone. They will put out these top fives and top 10 and top 20 lists, you know, you know, with the intention of trying to garner, you know, attention and outrage from social media. So they will do some outrageous stuff like ranking Cardi B's album above every Tupac album ever created, right? Cloud chasing stuff. However, back in 2009, these top five and top 10 lists actually were a big deal. People really took it seriously. So in 2009, when MTV Hottest MC in the Game list ranked Jay-Z as the number one artist in the world, people were confused, and some people said, hold up now, bro, like, yo, Lil Wayne is running it right now. Lil Wayne got, like, every feature in the game. Lil Wayne got multiple top 10 songs. He's killing every feature. He's featured on everything. Lil Wayne should be taking that spot. And Birdman thought the same thing. You see, because Birdman did an interview with Tropical TV in London, and he said verbatim, I don't think Jay-Z is the number one MC in no kind of way. Wayne's the best. He do the most, and he make the most money. I don't think no ninja in the business making more money than us. How can you be the best if you don't make the most money, and you don't do the most? Lyrically, come on, man. Be for real. Can't nobody F with Wayne. If you number one, and you ain't getting no money, it don't mean nothing. Now, <laughs> again, just looking back, currently with Jay-Z being worth $1.3 billion, these statements kind of sound blasphemous, right? But at that time, Birdman had an argument. Well, Jay-Z called went up the interview, and Jay-Z went ahead and took some subs at Birdman, right, on a song with Kanye called H-A-M on the Watch the Throne. Now, he went ahead and stated, I'm like, really? Half a Billy Ninja? Really? You got baby money. Keep it real with ninjas. Ninjas ain't got my lady money. Now, to stick up for Berman, Lil Wayne actually responded back to Jay-Z in that bar on It's Good off the Carter 5. Lil Wayne went ahead and stated, talking about baby money, I got your baby money. Kidnap your bit, get that how much you love your lady money. Now, that... <laughs> Uh, yo, that right there was vicious because now Lil Wayne is taking it to a stint where, yo, we didn't really expect it to go. He's taking it, yo, like past just a subtle hit. You feel me? Like he's not coming from Beyonce. So while at a pre-Grammy party in 2012, Wayne got on the mic and rapped a short freestyle, sending some shots at the throne. If you don't already know, the throne is a hip-hop duo group consisting of Jay-Z and Kanye West. Now, Wayne went ahead and stated... I met a bad red bone. I took the bit home. I asked her what she wanted to watch. She said, surely not the throne. Same, bruh. The streets ain't listening to no Jay-Z and Kanye watch the throne. Throw that bit in the garbage. Now, two years after Lil Wayne rapped about kidnapping Beyonce on his good, Jay-Z decided to respond back on a track called La Familia. Now, in his bar, Jay-Z went ahead and stated, Ninjas want to kidnap wifey. Good luck with that, bruh. You must gonna hide your whole family. What you think we wearing black for? Ready for that war? Ready for that war ready? You ain't ready, yo. You ready, yo. You ain't really ready. Real nigga chop. Now, since that last diss from Jay-Z, 
Lowen really hasn't responded back. As a matter of fact, Lil Wayne responded back to Jay-Z in 2014, and he showed love to Jay-Z, calling him a god. Now, a few years ago, if you guys remember, when Lil Wayne and Birdman were going through contract disputes again, Lil Wayne took a meeting with Jay-Z where he went to the club, and this was Jay-Z's opportunity to court Lil Wayne to potentially sign Lil Wayne since Birdman apparently like stole like $20 million from Lil Wayne, allegedly. But then Lil Wayne said when he went to the club, Jay-Z pretty much sunned him and put him to the side while talking to the band their friends. And that, on top of Jay-Z offering Lil Wayne like $400,000, was one of the main reasons why Lil Wayne never signed it to Jay-Z's Rock Nation while him and Birdman were going through contract disputes. Now, I believe their beef is over. You know, since Lil Wayne almost signed to the dude, I don't think they're really beefing. We haven't heard any more disses back and forth, man, but... That was one of, you know, the very few rap beats that was kind of lost in history. And not too many people quite understood or even knew that beef was going on, man. But if you guys knew the beef was going on, let me know in the comment section, man. It's your boy, Portix Flacco. Like the video, sub to the channel, comment for the algorithm. I'm out of here, folks. Peace.